This is why we have friends. Exactly. So let's see, it's five, six past the hour, so I think we can get started. Do you want to drive or should I drive? Since I can't even find the mute button effectively, I think probably it's best if you drive. <laughs> All right. Okay, so in that scenario, let's go ahead and get the um, meeting notes up. Uh, is anyone able to share? I will. Great, thanks. This is not May 8th, definitely. Okay, well, while we're getting set up, uh, so first, as a reminder, please add yourself to the attendees list. Second, please remember that this is a recorded call. Third, um, if there are any topics that anyone would like to uh, bring up or any documents or anything uh, that, are, that is not on the agenda, then please, uh, please bring it up. I was not hearing. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that? It was Ivan. I just said hi because my audio was not fine. Okay. All right, so the, uh, so the first uh, action item that we had was with uh, was with um, okay. So, uh, in terms of so in terms of the release notes, let's go ahead and uh, and get started there. So, overall, um, I personally am pretty happy with how the um, the initial set of releases um, uh, how the initial set of release notes were were looking. Um, Let's see, is that, that's against the change log. Yeah. Uh, so let me see if I can find the... Uh, uh, in Google, maybe this, this, this here. Yeah, that's the one. Uh -huh. Okay. So there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done before we can, uh, before we can uh, call this one uh, complete. So, uh, in terms of um, so in terms of tasks, uh, I want to go over some of the the details if possible. So, in the getting zero one zero, are those the three areas we have Helm, Docker images, and signed Git tags uh, linked on on GitHub? Are are those the three things that we want to to show off? Uh, do we want to add anything or remove anything? Mm. I mean, uh, I guess that the release notes uh, also <laughs> are kind of the release also, and maybe some form of documentation. I mean, is it going to be part of the uh, Git tag? I mean, how do we... I mean, I think that at least the, the, the release is that Istio does okay. Let's 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 get Istio. So they essentially have a, a archive of uh, the Helm, uh, a couple of readmes, maybe some, for example, configurations, things like that. 
and then everything is downloaded off uh, of Docker. Okay, so let's see. In terms of yeah, so so that that is a possibility. We could do a we could do a tarball with the Helm with the Helm charts in it, and that would definitely be uh, that would definitely be useful. So, um, so yeah, that's I, I I think that's a good idea to to add. So for, for images, uh, so the plan is, is the plan to, sh should we keep the plan to publish everything to, to Docker or do we want to do a simultaneous release to the new GitHub repos or do we want to just leave the GitHub repos alone for now and just stick entirely with, with the Docker, which I think is, is probably more well known at this point. Yeah, I, I I tend to like putting things in Docker, but we do have to think a little bit about where we stand for our Docker repos, because right now we put, we're dumping our CI in the same thing as our as everything else, and so we may want to consider um, essentially reorganizing in such a way that um, only, that we basically we, we have a separate repo for the CI stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think the suggestion last time was we have three. One is the release repo, where we basically put things that are actual released Docker containers properly tagged. Um, the CI repo, where we do all the farming off of images for CI, and then sort of what you would, might call the the Prax master repo, which is the repo where we go put the things that we are actually building off of the master branch that that have gotten past CI and been merged. <laughs> Yeah, and and something something that we could consider in this scenario is uh, so I don't know if you saw the GitHub announcement from about a week and a half two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So they they are now shipping uh, they are now attaching to every Git repo a uh, a Docker repo. So you can actually do a Docker push and pull to a GitHub based uh, repo that tracks it. Yeah, I would love to do that. I have actually put us in for the beta for that, for Network Service Mesh. But I see, so it's, oh. not, it's not properly released yet, is, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, no, I, I, as soon as I saw it, I went and signed up Network Service Mesh for the beta. And we're also, by the way, in the queue for the beta for GitHub Actions, which would be kind of cool. Um, but to the best of my knowledge, we are not actually in either of those betas yet. Actually, the GitHub Actions is a really great example because that came out a long time ago, and they're still they're still not out. So I guess we should not expect to see this for a considerable period of time. It's hard to say. The thing is, like I had originally, because I wasn't thinking about it when GitHub Actions came up, I signed up for my personal repo uh, for my personal organization, and that came through. And then I realized, oh wait, I'd actually need this for the Network Service Mesh Org, and went to sign this up for the beta list then. So. Some people are getting them. It just hasn't come through for us yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I, so I think that from an action item then, uh, and I know this is a documents meeting, but we, we can hash some of this out here. Uh, is perhaps perhaps what we do then is we have the the main production repo, which could be like network service mesh, and then we we separate out the CI into into something that's uh, that's less noisy. And um, that way, when we ship, we, we only ever ship to to a release uh, to a release branch. We're not uh, we're not uh, polluting the the other branch. Um, another strategy that I've seen as well is for people to create a development branch. So they'll have like colon d e v e l, and and they would then drive the master branch to to that. But I think one of the one of the things that gives me a little bit of pause on that is that I think our our approach is a little bit more complex than a standard than a standard application where you could build local images, see it work, and then discard the images and then and then move it forward because there's no distributed aspect to it. So uh, so we so the so the so I guess the question is in the scenario is uh, is that something that we would want to do in 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 for before this release and and make sure that the split is there and and properly working uh, it is a bit close to the release which gives me which worries me a little bit but 
at the same time, having something that's clean that we can put, put out there, I think would be of high value. I would postpone it for for right. I mean, we have enough things for this one. Okay. I mean, uh, we can never make it perfect. Right? I mean, no, that is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, and postpone that. And what what we'll do is we let's just make sure that when you do the the default pull, that we're not overriding the default uh, master. And master should always point to the to the latest uh, to, to the latest release branch. So so let's let's just d double check the infrastructure to make sure that that's that, that that assertion is true. And then beyond that, we we can punt any splitting or any or any other things like that off to a, to a future to a future time. And then what we'll do is we'll describe people that they can either grab off of for the Docker images. They can pull off of either. Docker master to get the, re the latest release, or they can do Docker zero. Uh, so, so here's a question. Do we want to have them? So we have, when we do a pull, like in, like suppose you're pulling Go. You can pull like Golang master, and it always pulls the latest. You put Golang colon one, and that pulls the latest 1.x branch, which right now there's only one major release. But when 2.0 comes out, then that, that means that people will not automatically upgrade from 1.0 to 2.0. Uh, do we want to adopt something similar in this? And uh, do, do we release where we have like get Docker, sorry, get network service mesh zero and uh, put a tag for zero one and a tag for zero one zero and I'll point them to the same image for this point and we can upgrade over time the, the images appropriately. Um. Yeah, this this sounds quite reasonable to me. Oh. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean the, the <clears throat> it sounds quite reasonable to me as a way we could go about it, and it, it has the advantages of not proliferating repos a lot. Yeah, and we focus on on tags. So there's a new release, and then we rely on the tags to to allow people to select what they want. So if someone wants an exact version, 0, 1, 0, I don't want to move up to 0, 1, 1 until I fully validate everything works, then things are okay. And when we start to hit the, the full releases with, uh, with uh, NSM, where we have our first 1.0 release with semantic versioning, and then this, uh, this will work beautifully, I think. It'll, it'll allow people to, to work out how much, how much risk do they want to take and or are they willing to accept uh, to uh, in order to get later later features or or bug fixes? Okay, and then um, we're signed to Git tags. Do, do we do we have a, a signature yet? We, we should probably create like a PGP uh, key. And then we can do the uh, we can actually do a signed release so that people could verify against and publish the uh, public uh, the public key on uh, perhaps maybe on Keybase. That sounds good. the The one question I do want to ask though is <clears throat> how do we go about securing the signing key? Um, because the, yeah, the, the 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 one concern I would have is how do we go about securing the signing key for um, the images? So, so in terms of signing, uh, perhaps that that could be that that could be a manual process to start off with until we're comfortable or until we find a <coughs> alternative that we can automate. Because right, right now, my my main problem is that we we when we unlock the key. And that key is sitting on a shared repository or or on a shared system, and I'm a little uncomfortable with, you know, when the image goes away. Are we, can we do we have a guarantee that it's always going to be clean properly, or are there going to be other side channels, you know, some processor attack or something similar where they manage to dump the region of memory that uh, PGP likes to store things in? So I'm so I'm a little so I'm a little concerned on that side. Yeah, I have similar sorts of concerns on that side. One thing I think that we can probably do <coughs> that would that would one thing that this sort of brings to mind immediately is 
Um, we should definitely do some key signing um, at QCAD EU next week because that way we, we've sort of at least got each other on the same web of trust. Um, the good news is I, th for reasons historical, <clears throat> I'm a trust anchor for Linux Foundation. So I'm a very highly trusted key. And so, you know, to sort of get the, the web of trust going within the NSM community as well. I think that'd be a fantastic, um, a fantastic idea. And uh, what I think we can do is we can, we can sign and we can print out on paper or something similar, a, a key that uh, we can then seal away and we can work out how do we want to properly secure it so that it's not, not lost or, or stolen easily. Well, I mean, I guess part of what I'm saying is, you know, at this point, if we're going to use PGP rather than having an NSM key, we just have one of us sign the, the release. But at least we've got some attestation from a, a public key. Um, I, I presume, how many of folks on here actually have public keys currently? I got a public key, but I'm, it's not a common thing. People... <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's not a super common thing, actually. Um, and, and it might be sort of worth thinking through how we want to do it, um, because public keys are kind of inconvenient um, to work with. But I'm, I'm all for having some way for people to be able to validate and verify an image. Yeah, and, and what I was thinking of is if we can publish the key in a couple of ways. So of course, we, we would publish them to the standard PGP key servers. Uh, we can publish it on uh, into network service mesh website itself, uh, which is gated with uh, with Git and secured with with HTTPS. Uh, the and pu and publish the fingerprints and so on of the of the image. Uh, the third place that we could also stick something is uh, again the uh, Keybase is gaining a lot of popularity, and they make the tooling uh, relatively easy to for people to set up their their keys so that they can then verify images and so on. So uh, of course it, it begs the question as to like, do you trust a third party entity to set up your, your infrastructure for this type of signing? Uh, but if it's for the purpose of verification of the image, uh, I, I think that, that, that maybe that may be an acceptable that may be an acceptable risk. We just have to see like do we have to give Keybase the private key or yeah, can we publish our own our own custom key. And I think if we can do a custom one, it should be, it should be okay. Yeah. So lots of things to look into. Definitely. Cool. So I'll take a, I'll take a look into some of that stuff. And, uh, I think we'll, we'll work out a strategy for, and I, I think what you described is, uh, is, is perfectly reasonable. So we sign, we, we sign each other and any one of us, uh, like we either we either select somebody as the as the signer, or or perhaps we can do something where any one of us can can sign and verify the the keys. So we can work out a strategy on that. But let's work out what our primitives are first. Um, cool. Okay. So in terms of demos. Um, so has has anyone gone over the rec uh, recently with over each of the demos and made sure that uh, the demos work? So we uh, actually, I am, um, yeah. So we do have the testing that you put in live for the make version of the demos um, that that's currently running to cover some aspects of them. Um, I did notice that we had a failure in there. Uh, we have some intermittent failures that are happening, so <clears throat> I'm trying to pull the other something that does better logging so we can figure out what's going on there. Um, and then I think it would probably also be good. I think the way we want to direct people to run demos generally is probably via Helm rather than via Make. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. And so, so the question I have in this scenario then is, uh, is the Helm infrastructure mature enough now where we could we could reasonably do that for zero one zero. Yeah, the only thing I, I, I've used it successfully to demo in the past. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that I would actually really prefer to see is being able to break out the clients from the services as separate charts. So you can say, look, you know, 
Day zero, Helm install network service mesh. Great, now you've got network service mesh enabled. Oh, you've got monitoring, NS, Helm install, NSM monitoring. Great, now we can see monitoring. Um, you know, oh, you'd like to you have a VPN available, you know, Helm install VPN. Um, oh, and then you'd like someone to consume it. Well, Helm, start, Helm install some Helm chart for the client. Because um, that sort of flows naturally in terms of what day one, day, you know, day one, zero, day one, day two looks like. Okay, that makes sense. So in, in that scenario, uh, I, I suppose the only thing that we need to do in this, in this is to, uh, is, so it sounds like the automation is, is there. Is, is, is that workflow in CI yet, or is that something we should, uh, we should build out? So the, the Helm stuff is not actually in CI yet. Uh, the make stuff is being tested, which is important, but the Helm stuff is not. <clears throat> Nikolai, do you have any thoughts? I know you, you're the one who did the make testing, which is crucially important. Uh, we're breaking up really badly, Nikolai. I can't really understand you. Yeah. It, Nicole, I might help if you if you type for a short while because you're breaking up quite a quite significantly. Like we're getting every other vowel. Okay, I think we I think we officially lost them. Yeah, I think he may be trying to just kind of go the direction and, and figure out his audio stuff. So, <coughs> cool. okay. So, I'm, I'm absolutely with you though about testing, figuring out what the demo is, getting it cleanly documented, and testing the uh, putting it in the CI. One of the things I've noted is I've had a couple of people internally been asking to go and kick the tires on the code, and sort of we have all the pieces, but they're in various places. Like we have the quick start, but it's oriented towards the make files. We've got the home docs but they don't tell you anything about how to get a cluster. Um, we've got some stuff about how to do the checks with make check um, in the quick start, but we don't have that stuff related to the home charts. Um, we have, you know, I don't think we have any documentation about using skydive uh, to go and visualize what's happening. So there, there, there is, there is, sort of the, the traditional scatter gather problem in documentation, you write excellent docs as you're doing things and they don't all quite hang together as a unitary whole. Yeah, so so I guess the part of what we need to do then is we'll is uh, come up with a uh, with a plan similar to how we how we drive the uh, release itself. Uh, perhaps what we need to do then is uh, is uh, come up with like a Google document or uh, or a, an issue or a spec, a spec that we can then track and say, here are the documentation tasks that we need to do. And uh, that way we can track, you know, each, uh, each, major, each major item and make sure that, it, that the progression gets done. So like it could be something like, make sure that how you spin up a cluster is, you know, with Helm is, is properly documented. How do you, you know, and just, just, just to get like an, a, an, an outline of, of what needs to be, of when that's what needs to be in there. Well, I mean, it turns out actually that the Helm docs are actually really amazingly well done. You did a good job on them, Ilya. Um, you know, they even include things like the following is likely going to have to be done if you get an error like this, because there's a degenerate case where you have to go run a few queue control commands to set up permissions for things. Um, you know, so they're, they're very well done as far as they go. They're just capturing the Helmy bits. Um, which are important to capture, but again, if you're say, sending someone to the, here's where to go kick the tires, you end up jumping them from dock to dock to dock. Ah, I see. So, so, so the uh, issue that we're having is we have good documentation. It's just we need to lay it out in a very, in a, in a very easy to follow way. Exactly. Right now people are... the, the getting started guide is excellent um, if you're going to start and you're going to use the make machinery. Um, the yes. help guide is extremely well done if you have a cluster and you just want to run a Helm chart and you're not worrying about how you're going to convince yourself that anything is working or see how it's actually going on. And I think this is actually right and proper for those guides as they stand. I think they're actually scoped correctly. 
um, is you do want to be able to point people to the, oh, you just want to get home going, here's what you do. Um, but we, we don't really have sort of a demo walkthrough, and that might be helpful. Um, okay, that makes sense. Okay, I'm back, I hope. And you sound great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so wireless uh, range extenders actually help and do their job, right? Uh, okay, so uh, I wanted to, to, to talk a little bit about the example. So uh, I'm uh, right now I'm, I'm working on rep replicating the demos that we have in the main repo, in the examples repo. And I already have two more uh, demos, uh, examples there. Uh, so it will make it, because I split uh, kernel ICMP and PICMP into separate repos, this will make essentially um, five demos in the examples. So I know that this is a little bit of a kind of controversial topic that we have discussed about this uh, back and forth. Um, and maybe for the first release, we're just going to go with the main repo. That makes sense because that's what we have today. Uh, but maybe at some point we could just point the people to this examples repo and everything will be there and, you know. Yeah, I, I, I like that approach. I, I'd even make a suggestion and please note, this is only half thought through, so don't take me too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I'd even make a suggestion that we look at going more granular, right? So if, for example, um, we were to go and say, look, um, we have the VPN, you know, we have the, the it, it, imagine doing a repo for each um, network service endpoint um, that we could basically use, because then imagine the, the way the CI ends up running, right? So if I just go and I change the ICMP responder, then I, you know, the commit goes into that repo, it's CI goes and tests to make sure the ICMP responder NSC is still working. And yeah. if it's working, then we go. And so we don't have to test the broad swath of everything because that has nothing to do with the ICMP responder code, right? As long as it properly comes up and does its thing in a, in a known to be working version of network service mesh, then we're done. We don't have to go test the you know, crazy auto healing stuff and all these other things. And that might significantly speed up the CI by basically breaking things down into smaller repo pieces. Thoughts? Uh, well, I mean, uh, then how you you should have separate CIs for each each of the examples. So this is actually a really common pattern when you have a little bit more control over your infrastructure. So I'll give you an example. Uh, the the people at uh, ThoughtWorks, uh, which is uh, headed by people like Martin Fowler, uh, created a build system which uh, they unfortunately named Go. And and uh, but one of the things that they did was uh, they 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 had the the insight from experience that when you when you build a a project that you have that there are, that you have you do have dependencies on how the projects are are laid out and you have a set of of pipelines so there is some similarity in Circle CI with with pipelines uh, but part of the part of the issue that ends up running is that when you trigger a build for let's say a uh, network service client and you don't change any of the apis then in that scenario it's like what do you have to rebuild you have to build rebuild nsm manager no you have to rebuild perhaps your demos and rerun those and so on so you end up with this dependency management thing that occurs so that way you trigger things that uh in order to make sure that they continue to to work against, as you said, known uh, known versions, and would and in the long run, what ends up happening is you would then peg things like the NSM manager to a semantic version itself. So instead of having the umbrella semantically versioned, which you can still do, but uh, each component gets their own semantic version with the same, with similar properties that you can then use to to verify that things work or don't work and control the the uh, artifacts as they as they change so uh, so th there may be there may be some strategies that we can look at I'm not suggesting we use their go their build system because it's I don't think it'll be a good fit for us but there may be some strategies we can use to to simplify and head towards this pattern as you described yeah let, let me let me be super clear about the, the the pattern I just described number one it's a half-baked idea number two Everything you're talking about doing for the examples repo, Nikolai, is actually a positive step forward. Um, whether we do or do not decide to calculate it is a good idea. Right. 
please don't slow down or stop at all because I had a harebrained idea. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I completely <laughs> agree. <not> going to... <laughs> it, 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 well, I mean, sometimes it happens. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, somebody's like, oh, I guess there's this better way we're going to do it. And the answer is, I have no idea if this is a better way. <laughs> oh, for idea. me, uh, <laughs> so what I see now with the example is that essentially I have, for example, nightly builds, which verify every day that the examples that I have are building and running uh, against the whatever we have in master or at least the published latest images. Let, that's that's more correct because I don't build images. I just download yep. whatever is yep. out there. Yep. Yep. And I don't know. I mean, if you have to do this on five different uh, repos, example by example, eh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, no, there, there are trade-offs and you're absolutely right. It may prove to be a massive pain in the ass. Um, I mean, th this is always the trade-off. Like, um, great modularity brings both costs and benefits. And there, there is some point at which it stops making any, any damn sense. Um, and I just don't know where that is here. But either way, I think breaking down to examples is probably why. I would be unsurprised if it turns out that we don't quite get there for the 0 0.1 release. Um, but I, I think the work is still really important. All right, so uh, so in terms of a of actionable items for for the release, so so it sounds like the the main thing that we need to do is ensure that the documentation that exists for uh, across the board and the uh, the documentation that uh, that Ilya put together uh, for Helm uh, gets adapted in a way that uh, that we can say here's how you run a demo and. Uh, make sure that those are 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 tested by people who have less or no experience with NSM in order to make sure that they're readable and understandable. I actually have a, a classic that I'm going to use. Um, when we did the, the initial open sourcing of VTP, um, there is a, I went and got a director to try the instructions. <laughs> do you have a director in mind? I do, I do. He's going to be deeply amused, but possibly not cooperative. Um, <laughs> You know, but but the, the thing was when I when he could sit down and from the instructions cold in less than thirty minutes actually have things working, that's when I knew we had good directions. Because he's a bright guy, but he probably hasn't touched code in fifteen years. So, nah, it sounds good to me. Okay, so let's see. And make sure this gets added to the uh, to the release notes. Oh. oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I added it as a as a to do item, so you can do a search for to do in the uh, in the release notes area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go in after the fact and uh, start putting together a documents board, uh, create a new a new board and start outlining the various things that we need to, to do in there as, uh, in order to improve and get to the state where we want. So, uh, so we'll turn these into, into GitHub issues effectively. So, interestingly, this, this could probably live on the, uh, net, we, this, this could probably live on the network service mesh site page because this is where I think most of the work's gonna be done. So we could then match them to issues there. Um, let's see, in terms of the, so in terms of the document then, I think those are the, uh, those are the main ones that I wanted to cover in, uh, in, in this one. So if, um, uh, I guess one other, one last thing is on unknown issues. How, what do we, what do we want to do on, on known issues? Do we, do we just want to leave the generic thing that we have at the moment, or do we, do we want to call out very specific things? Yeah, I mean, we could just say, it's alpha, please. <laughs> Don't consider it in production, <laughs> if that's yeah, a nomination. Yeah, 
the way I usually put it to people because it's a little settler is to say this is our 0 0.1 release, which is ex you know, which would be treated exactly like a 0 0.1 release. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm and I'm happy to to leave it as uh, as a generic thing right now because I think enumerating everything would just be a waste of a waste of time unless there's something really big that we need to call out like you know don't uh, don't use VPP in this way because a kernel bug will cause your your kernel to panic. <laughs> You know, and even then, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd still be skeptical of whether we should stick that in or not. So, how about we we leave it as it as it is at the moment, and uh, and then once we actually get to a proper 1.0 release, and then. Uh, what we can do is we can create a separate known issues uh, page, uh, a document, because that's, that's also, I think, should not just be like a static page. It should be something that over time, as, issue, as major issues are discovered, we can then populate that, uh, we can populate that uh, page uh, on the website and say, here are the known issues for the, one, for the 101 release. And uh, that way people can then track and make sure that they, they see what things are you know what things are going on and so on. Does 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 that sound uh, does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Um, cool. I don't have anything else on the release notes at this point. I think it's just a bunch of, of task items, and then once we're closer to doing the release, we uh, we can uh, go over and make sure that it's that everything is as we want. So as, as you know, nothing set in stone until we uh, until we sign the commit. So, let's see. It's back to the uh, back to the meeting notes, and let's see who's on right now. So it doesn't look like we have any of the Volk people, so I can't ask them any questions regarding to the videos or anything like that. Uh, Nikolai, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to spend more time on the uh, on our presentation. I've been slammed with uh, my time schedule, but things are opening up now. Uh, now that I have a I had a product uh, release that I had to push through uh, earlier, and that's done. So. If you are available, we can do a follow up after, like like this call. Yeah, the, the only problem I'm going to run into is uh, I'm supposed to be checked out of the room in 15 minutes, so I'm not going to have the okay. room anymore. So, uh, but I have a I have a person I have a persona in mind uh, in terms of how I want of how of how I want to try to approach it, and so I'll pitch that to I'll pitch that to you and. Uh, uh, and I'll put I'll put together some some slides uh, at Warnicky style, and uh, see if we see if it uh, if it meshes well with uh, with how you're thinking of things. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I slides already. I mean, yep. So I mean, the, I, I also like for the intro stuff. We still need to get some slides together as well, and those are probably going to come in a little bit hot. Um, one of the things I would love to do, particularly for the intro talk is we have a brand new color palette. We have a bunch of new graphics to work with. Um, I, I may tweak some of the iconography a little bit, so. Oh, hey, Ed, if you want to hear something a bit comical, I got another email from the FIDO Summit uh, saying that I needed to register. Ah, <sighs> sorry. And, and I went in to register. I, I paid the 50 bucks for the other one, and it turns out that it's a radio button, so I can't register for both. So I let them know. So. <laughs> but just a heads up, uh, they they are charging us for they they are charging the speakers to to speak. So yeah, I, I, I it's just yeah, it's grumble grumble. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the only other thing that's really bugging me at this point is the what is uh, NSM to replace on the site. Because at this point, my my inclination is just to delete that article, 
and then we can uh, Jeffrey said he was coming up with a first draft and he may have already done so because he's he's pretty on the ball like that and so uh, so perhaps for the what is new we can uh, if if we get a new version of that then we can stick it up but I'm, I'm not comfortable with what's what's up there anymore you know, the thing was written over a year ago and has really old yeah. concepts that have moved on yeah, I mean, the other thing I want to make sure we do is that we sort of fully express the breadth of where we're, what, we're go what we're doing and where we're going. Um, because while we absolutely are going to be taking care of the NFV guys, um, I think we actually have even more going on on enterprise than we do on NFV. I, I agree entirely with that. And so... Yeah, I mean, it, literally every enterprise networking guy I talk to who is coping with the cloud transformation stuff, you know, they like their eyes light up immediately when this concept clicks because they and they start talking about the use cases they need it for yeah and i think now that we have the envoy as an example uh, i see this could speed up oh I'm, I'm super happy about that by the way that makes me so happy yeah the the envoy one is easy it also makes it very easy for me to deflect the uh the istio question uh as to like why well not really deflect but give a good answer because one of the questions that I get asked almost every time that I speak with someone is, why don't we land this thing in, in Istio? Or you know, why not contribute it to Istio? Uh, and I usually have two responses to that. To that. Uh, but the, the one I've been using most recently is that, well, we're, we don't focus on Istio because it's an L4, L7. And L4, L7, you don't have L2, L3 consume L4, 7. You have the opposite, L4, four seven consume L2, L3. And uh, we are provide we, we are providing Envoy. We have an integration with Envoy, which acts as a network service. And that uh, that Envoy could be controlled, potentially controlled by by Istio if the Istio people choose to do so. Yeah, which actually also reminds me. Um, do you guys feel good enough about that example that you want to sit down with Matt Klein? Oh, we know Matt's not going to be in KubeCon Europe. That's that's right. We, we, can, we can arrange a call after KubeCon Europe and sit down and show them what we got. Um, and or we could potentially show what the Envoy community we got when we get comfortable. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. And um, I, we, can also, we can also show them um, uh, a concept of, of it potentially integrating it in with the, with the Kubernetes networking in as well, as opposed to just a, a side thing, if, if that's a direction we want to, to target but uh, but I think you know even just showing off the envoy as we have at the moment I think would be would be fantastic because you know people can ask for whatever service that they want with an envoy that's been created by someone else uh, as or by the operator and get much better control over over how these things work yep yep so right now running envoy as a as a sidecar um, it gives uh, gives the user control over gives the uh, gives the 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 pod or whoever has the act has access to to manipulate that pod uh, control over over envoy as opposed to the operator and so that's a that's a pretty big shift that uh, that we're proposing and I, and, I, and it's one that I think will be very well received. So I'll, I'll add that. Um, let's see. I don't have anything else. Is there anything else that that's, uh, that people want to talk about? Nope. Not me. Cool. Well, in that scenario, let's uh, I'll let's yield back ten minutes of our time, and uh, I am looking forward to seeing uh, this thing. Each of you in Barcelona. Cool. Yeah, probably most of us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you sooner, Ed. <laughs> A tiny bit, although I'll be it'll be a bit of the afternoon before I say like want to go in. So. No, fair enough, fair enough. So. All right, talk to you later. Okay, to Mike. Bye. 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 Bye.